Welcome back guys. Today we're going to try something different. We're going to analyze three stocks in today's video because YouTube tends to reward the longer videos. So we're going to do three stocks instead of one so that I can make the video a little bit longer. But we're going to do Sherwin-Williams, we're going to do John Deere, and we're going to do Waste Management today. So let's get into it. So Sherwin-Williams, they are a paint company. They sell paints and, and stains and stuff. Very consistent business. They've got a lot of different brands, a lot of different products. Um, their five-year chart is very good. Their all-time chart is very, very good. These are the charts that I love to see. I love to see just straight up into the right. Um, usually that's a good sign that they'll be able to do that in the future. Uh, their market cap of $77 billion uh, and a price-to-earnings ratio of 32. So quite steep price-to-earnings ratio, so they better have some growth. Let's take a look at the financials here see what kind of growth they're looking at and their growth has been okay um 15 billion up to 23 billion it's not quite it's like a 50 percent growth over the past six years and their growth has been slowing down it's only been four percent last year and only one percent the last quarter so yeah slowing growth probably slowing housing market slowing consumer th those are probably the reasons you know higher interest rates probably affects this um and their margins have been pretty consistent, uh, around 10%. They, their balance sheet, they do have quite a bit of debt, 11.57 billion in debt. Well, actually, 12.5 billion in debt. So quite a bit of debt. Um, it's not too bad though. They could pay it off in probably like five years um, if they put all their free cash flow towards it. Um, looking at their free cash flow, they pay some dividends and then they buy back a lot of stock. So. Yeah, they pretty much return what they can to shareholders, so that is good. Their stats, their return on invested capital around 15%. That's that's okay. It's not it's it's pretty decent actually, especially for like a paint company. Um, gross margin around 45%. That's really good, and net margin around 10%. So yeah, pretty decent, pretty decent margins and very very consistent. That's that's what I like about this. I'm going to the analysts. The analysts are projecting 11.4 going up to 12.8, which is pretty pretty strong growth is what they're projecting um, in terms of earnings. And for the revenue, they're projecting basically a 2% increase this year going up to a 4.5% next year. 24 billion or 23.6 going to 24.6 billion. I think that's pretty accurate um, assessment there. Taking a look at the stats, let's check the short percentage, only 1.29%. That's not bad, so that's a good sign. Let's look at the DCF model I have on them. Here's the DCF model. I put the estimates up here. Buybacks at $2 billion, net debt at $12.5 billion. Discount rates of 10% because I want a 10% return on all of my stocks. Exit multiple of 20. Um, this maybe could be pushed higher just because of the consistency of this business. Maybe we pushed it at 24. Um, and if we grow their earnings by 8%, then their fair share price is going to be around 288. So pretty close to where they're at. Um, that's if they can grow their their earnings by 8%, which I kind of doubt that they're going to be able to do that, um, especially with their slow revenue growth, um, especially in the last uh, year, their revenue growth has really slowed. So I would expect something more like this scenario to play out where their growth is about 4 or 5% in terms of revenue and their profit margin just stays at 10% because that's what it's been at for the last five years. And I think that the profit margin is going to stay at 10% for the foreseeable future. And using this model, their fair share price comes out to $202 a share and accounting for debt, it goes all the way down to 153. I'd probably put them around 180. And if we use a discount rate of maybe 5%, then we're still not even at their fair share price. So I I don't really think that Sherwin Williams has good value right now. I think its price is too high. Uh, that's one percent. Uh, and so I I would stay away from Sherwin Williams at this time. Um, you could maybe buy it for the consistency of it. Um, however, it's not going to get you amazing returns moving forward. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, let me know what you guys think about Sherwin Williams in the comments. Now let's move on to John. Deere. Okay, now let's take a look at John Deere. So Deere and Company, and over the past five years, they're up 169%. Very, very strong performance from John Deere. Definitely outpacing the S&P 500. Um, 
this company is basically a manufacturer of equipment, farm equipment and stuff. Uh, they um, probably their direct competition would be like a CNH industrial. However, they're a much smaller company or maybe like even like a Caterpillar might be competition. However, there's not a lot of competition, especially when you get su to such a large scale uh, on the manufacturing scale that Deere is. So they, they do have a moat. So that's what, one thing that I like about this company. Um, yeah, and their performance has been insane um, straight up into the right. Um, you can see it, it is somewhat cyclical. Um, some In some periods when the economy is weak, it does drop quite heavily. So we'll just have to keep that in mind. However, it has been holding up quite well, even with its recent revenue, which has been negative. Uh, so let's take a look. Their market cap of 103 billion. Yeah, definitely one of the largest players in the space and price to earnings ratio of 11. So that's actually really low. Um, very, very good to see that. Um, it's probably saying that they don't think they can sustain their earnings that they had last year into the future. So let's uh, let's take a closer look at their revenues here. Let's see what we're lo looking at. Their revenue growth has been actually stellar. They doubled their revenue from 2017 to 2023, and um, they only had one year where it was negative. And court on a quarterly basis, though, they do have some negative quarters. So their growth, it does seem to be stalling. Um, probably has to do with the high interest rates. Um, farmers don't want to buy new equipment with the high interest rates, and they definitely benefited in 2021 and 2022 from, from low interest rates. Um, so if interest rates stay high, that could be bad for John Deere. However, if they drop, then John Deere is going to benefit massively. Um, their margins are fairly consistent. Actually, they've been expanding quite a lot the last couple of years. Maybe they do some financing. They, I, I wouldn't put it past them that they do some financing. Uh, I, I haven't looked into that. However, with their margins being expanded, it might have to do with the high interest rates. Not quite sure. Um, yeah, let's take a look at the balance sheet. The balance sheet, they do have quite a lot of debt, um, $55 billion in debt. Uh, yeah, would take some time to, to pay it off. So that's kind of why I think they do some financing is because their debt is so high. They've got lots of liabilities, lots of assets. They might act somewhat like a bank um, when you look at this. However, they also have lots of manufacturing plants. So we can actually look at their property. Plants and equipment is actually $13 billion. Um, actually, not as high as I would think because 13 billion compared to 100 billion in total assets is actually not that much. Let's take a look at the cash flow. Cash flow, they pay a, they pay a bit of a dividend, otherwise they buy back lots of stock. They actually took out a ton of debt in 2023 to buy back stock, which is kind of insane, I think. However, maybe it's going to work out for them. Uh yeah, they bought back lots and lots of stock last year. Uh probably expect that moving forward. However, maybe not quite as much stock this year uh yeah pretty insane that they did that but uh moving on their return on invested capital has actually been increasing so that's good to see 15 percent um in the last year and the the gross margin 30 percent that's been expanding their margins have been expanding their net margin expanded up to 16 percent um very very good to see that as well yeah great net margin. And we could probably expect that moving into the future. Um, if interest rates drop, then probably their net margin is going to fall, but their revenue is going to go up a lot. So probably balances out quite a bit there. Let's look at the analysts. The analysts are projecting 25.3 and basically flat um, earnings and then their revenue to basically be negative this year and then um, slightly negative the year after that into 2025. So um, they're projecting basically flat growth for John Deere. And taking a look at, at stats, we can see their short percentage. Short percentage is only 1.3%. That's not bad at all, um, especially for a company that has declining revenue. So yeah, good good sign there. Let's look at the model I have. I put the estimates in. I put the buybacks at $5 billion, dis, uh, net debt at $55 billion, discount rate 10% because I want the 10% return. I already told you that. Exit multiple of 20. Um, I think that's fair for this company with such a wide moat. So taking a look at the earnings, I just have their earnings growing by 3%. Actually, I think that's quite low. Uh, and even with this assumption, then their fair share price comes out to 407. Um, so not bad there. 
Um, but they do have lots of debt, so if you account for the debt, then probably be like 350. However, I think this might be a little bit low for earnings. And, and we can go to the revenue growth model as well. The, I have their revenue at staying flat. That's what the analysts think. And then just growing 3% from there. Um, profit margin staying at 15%. That's what they did last year. So if this assumption comes true, then we're looking at 413. Um, their growth the last six years has been a double up in six years, which is what, like 10%, 12% um, Kager. So if we actually saw that 12% um, growth from there, then we could see their fair share price jumping a lot. Um, however, it's probably unrealistic that they're going to be able to hit 12% growth over the coming years. So I'd probably put them at more around like 7%, um, take an average between the two. I'd say this could be a pretty realistic scenario for John Deere with their revenue growth growing at 7% and their profit margin sticking around 15. It might be a little bit lower um, moving forward, more towards their historical average of like 8 to 10%. Um, but if this um, scenario plays out, then we're looking at $400 a share. I definitely don't think John Deere is a bad buy at this moment. Um, they're yeah, an industrial company. They've got a moat. Their valuation isn't terrible. Uh, their growth has been really, really solid, um, even though their growth the last couple of quarters hasn't been too high. Um, I'd say this would be a good long-term hold. So um, let me know what you think about John Deere in the comments. And let's move on to the next one, which is waste management. Okay, now let's take a look at waste management. Waste management, they take care of garbage, uh, basically, uh, yeah, industrial service. Over the past five years, they're up 90%, um, outpaced to the S&P 500, so strong performance there. Their all-time chart looks amazing, uh, very, very good all-time chart. Not a lot of volatility except for in 2000, so yeah, great chart there. Let's. Their market cap is $84 billion. so one of, I think this is the largest waste management company, if I'm not wrong. And their price to earnings ratio is 33, so so quite steep on their price to earnings ratio. Um, over the past five years, they've grown their their revenue by about 25%. Yeah, well, by about 30%, but their share price went up 90%. So it definitely has to do with some multiple expansion there. Uh, yeah, usually that's a sign that the company's overpriced. Let's look at the financials a little closer here. Yeah, their revenue growth has been, it's been okay. It's been very consistent, which is which is a good sign. However, it hasn't been like super, super high. Uh, and the past year, they were up 4%. And the last couple quarters, they've been up 5%. So yeah, definitely slowing growth from, 21, from 21 and 22. And yeah, their margins have, are very consistent, usually around 10, 10 to 12%. Yeah, net income. Pretty good. They buy back lots of stock. Their balance sheet, they have $15 billion in net debt. And can they pay that $15 billion in net debt? So it's pretty high debt load. Yeah, pretty high debt load, $2 billion. It would take them like seven years to pay that with their, their current free cash flow. They pay a bit of a dividend, and then they buy back stock with the rest of it. So they bought back 1.2 billion in stock last year. Uh, seems to be pretty decent uh, capital allocation. Let's look at the stats. Their return on invested capital is around 10%. That's okay. Their gross margin, 20, it's 27%, 28%, super consistent. And their net margin, 13% uh, this year, uh, a few years back, and it went down to 10, 11%. So probably around 12% would be an average, a good average. Let's look at what the analysts are thinking. The analysts are projecting 7.3 earnings per share going to 8.03 next year. And the revenue estimate is for 21 and a half going up to 23 billion, which is a five or basically a 6% increase this year and next year, a 6% increase in the revenue. I think that's uh, pretty realistic for their revenue. I think this is unrealistic for their earnings um, based on the model that I made. Looking at their stats, let's look at their short percentage. Short percentage is extremely low, very green flag there, 0.61. Yeah, nobody's going to want to short a consistent business like this. It just wouldn't make any sense. 
So let's look at the DCF model. I put the estimates here, revenue estimate by Bax, 1.2 billion, net debt of 15.74 billion, discount rates of 10%, exit multiple of 20, I think that's fair. Currently they're trading at 33, which I think is quite high. I think this their exit multiple should be quite, should be a quite a bit lower um, in se seven years. Uh, just because their growth will probably slow down quite a bit, and uh, and usually a business with a mature multiple should be trading around the market average, which which is around 20 right now. So, looking at their growth estimates, I have 8% here. I think that's okay for them, and even with an 8% increase every single year in their earnings their fair share price comes out to 164 and after debts it's 124. Um, with their revenue margins model profit margins staying consistently at 12 percent they might increase they might decrease but i think 12 percent is a good historical average and i think they can do that into the future and it, for their revenue growth seven percent revenue growth uh, i think that this might be a little bit high the analysts are projecting six percent moving forward so I think that this is an optimistic scenario for waste management. And even with this, their fair share price comes out to about $140 a share. Counting for debts, it's 100 So I'd probably put them around 130 So they're currently way overpriced. I don't think I'd touch this stock unless you want very, very like consistent business. Um, but your returns are not going to be that high. Um, maybe like 5%. Yeah, not even 5%. Well, maybe 5% if they hit those earnings numbers. But uh, honestly, I would rather probably just own bonds than waste management. I think waste management uh, is way overpriced right now, and I would stay away from it personally. Uh, there's a lot of different businesses that, that offer greater returns than this, and not to mention that you could just sit in bonds and, and probably outperform this stock. So yeah, that's what I think. Uh, let me know what you think about waste management. And yeah, let me know what you think about this style of video where there's three different stocks in one. And uh, yeah, make sure to hit that like button for all that work. And I'll see you in the next video.